you're live. Hey Fit Fam, thanks for joining me on Neri's Kitchen today. We are live on location in beautiful St. Francis Xavier. Today's guest is a chef that believes in healthy cooking and has a beautiful 1,000 square foot garden. She is a cancer survivor of five years, has three dogs, has been married for seven years, and just recently started a position with Cisco. Please welcome Chef Lori. Good morning. Good morning, Lori. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me on your beautiful property. It's Absolutely. so nice here. Let's take a look at your garden. Shall we go pick some yes, carrots? Let's do it. Oh, carrots, yes. So nice here. So we're kind of at that point where we're starting to pull everything up and till everything. Okay. So all the soil that you see right now is uh, those, that was all tomatoes, but of course they've all been harvested and turned into sauce. So this morning we're going to be using carrots from the garden to make the soup that I'm preparing. Okay. And what kind of soup is it? We are doing a top green curry carrot soup. Yum. This is such a big like this. So, got some carrots, so okay. should we get in and yeah. get our hands dirty? Put my gloves on. So, yeah, if you just want to give it a little bit of a wiggle. Oh my gosh, okay. And then give it a yank. Okay, so. So here, there. we'll clean, clean these off yeah. a little bit. Uh, right now, we're down to uh, onions, parsnips, and a few little uh, cherry tomatoes and hot peppers, and uh, and then we've got some beets still in the ground over here. Those are yeah. So we don't we only eat the tops. We don't eat the uh, the bottoms. But you so the parsnips will uh, leave the ground because they're actually better if they go through a hard frost. And you can actually uh, leave them in the ground over the winter, and then they're actually even sweeter. The parsnips. Yeah. Didn't know that. And they don't freeze. They don't freeze in the nope. winter. Nope. Beautiful flowers too. Yeah, they're kind of on their kind of on their last legs. But now that we've got the uh, the summer temps coming up this week, they uh, they should still survive if we continue to water them. So we're doing two dishes today. Okay. So I've got the uh, carrots simmering right now with some chicken stock and water. Okay. This recipe, if you wanted to make it uh, uh, vegan, uh, you could substitute the chicken stock with uh, veg stock, and it's also going to be gluten-free. So, I'm just going to see how the... And how many carrots did we put in the soup? So, this has got 16 cups of carrots. Okay. And then we've got um, two liters of chicken stock and uh, one liter of water. Okay. Yeah. So we just want those to become uh, fork tender. Okay. And uh, then we're gonna blend it. Oh, okay. And then the other dish that we're doing for a dessert, so this is a, a very healthy, high protein uh, dessert here. So this is a black bean brownie. So we've got uh, a half a cup of oats, three tablespoons of uh, cocoa powder, unsweetened, a teaspoon of uh, baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. So this is gonna go in the food processor if you wanna help me out with this. Oh, this thing here? Yep. Okay. And then we've got a can of drained, rinsed black beans. Just dump it? Just dump it, yep. All right. And then we're gonna do uh, one whole egg. So this isn't, um, this isn't gonna be a, um, vegan or vegetarian, but this is going to be gluten-free and high protein because of the uh, the black beans. Okay. And then the recipe calls for vegetable oil, but I've substituted coconut oil because mm -hmm. I think that it's a healthier fat to cook with. Okay. And then um, three tablespoons of uh, molasses. Oh, molasses. Yeah. Can you taste the coconut oil in the brownies? Not really. All right. Yeah, it's... Uh, 
it's very very subtle but it's just it's a healthier fat versus right. the uh versus the the canola or the vegetable oil so this recipe also calls for a teaspoon of uh, splenda but i don't believe in um i don't believe in um I guess the artificial sweeteners. I don't believe in artificial sweeteners. Well, what about uh, stevia? Would you use stevia in there or honey? You, you if could you don't have molasses. You could use uh, you could use honey. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Molasses has uh, stiffened up a little bit here. I don't think I've ever used molasses before in my cooking. It's uh, it adds nice um, complexity, mm -hmm. and uh, this is really the only sweetness in this uh in this recipe okay. it just adds a different depth of uh of flavor it has a um, i guess a very deep caramel taste yeah okay and so we're gonna basically whip that up So if you want to give it a if you want to give oh, it a yeah. scrape, sure. Just the sides here. Yeah. Is that it? Is that all of the ingredients? That's that all using? the ingredients except for uh, chocolate chips. That's which really will, simple. Yeah. And so, of course, a lot of people might not realize that uh, oatmeal is actually uh, gluten-free, but a lot of times um, it's produced in a, in a factory. I'm just going to grab some gloves. Sure. It's produced in a factory where they also um, manufacture flour. So sometimes there's cross-contamination. Right, right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this into this eight by eight pan okay that i've just lined with uh, parchment paper. a little bit of parchment is it paper. greased also do you have to grease it you don't have to grease it just helps it to uh, get out a little bit uh, easier yeah so what we'll do is we'll uh we'll just kind of put the these are milk chocolate uh, chips and just fold it in yeah and then right. we can just scrape it into the um, scrape it into the pan. Oh gosh. Okay. I think I put some in that little hole. That's okay. We'll just bang it out. I don't have a fancy food processor at home. I always just put things in my blender. Yeah, they work great too. I use my Ninja for a lot of things. Ninja. Yeah, actually, yeah. That's what I have is a Ninja, but it's more of a smoothie blender. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I use mine for uh, salad dressings and yeah, all sorts of things. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay. And just uh, bang out that oh. little center part oh, there. Oh, that's how you get it out, okay. Yeah. And then we'll just smooth it. Just smooth it out. Yeah. So even though some of the oats look like they're uh, not completely broken down, they'll soften up a little bit in the uh, in the baking process. Okay, is that good enough, Lori? Yeah, let's just <laughs> flatten it out, more. smooth it out. And just a little trick too that uh, for anybody at home, you know, if you were to put a little bit of fat, you know, a little bit of coconut oil or or whatnot on oh, uh, yes, on the spatula, on the spatula, yeah, then and it, it wouldn't stick. then it wouldn't stick so badly. That was really simple. So it's just black beans, a little bit of oats, um, a little bit of sweetener, molasses. Yep. Um, baking powder. Baking salt. powder, salt, the uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil and that's an it. egg. Oh, and an egg. And that's yep. it. And that's it. Wow. So then this is going to go into a preheated oven at 325 for about uh, 20 minutes. Okay. So I'll just set the timer. So Laura, you said that you're a cancer survivor of five years? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So what, what cancer was it? I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in 2014. So 2015 was treatment, 2016 mm -hmm. was recovering from surgery, mm -hmm. and then uh, went back to work in the fall of uh, 2016 after being away for almost two years. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
it was kind of a kind of a crazy time so let's see how these are doing so these are tender so what we're going to do is we're going to just turn the temperature off for now and i'm going to get you to help me and so prior to being a chef, you were a culinary assistant, you said? I was a culinary consultant, consultant. With, yeah, with Cisco for nine and a half years. And now I just transitioned into a, a new role. And that's where you met Greg. Greg. And that's where I met Greg. Uh, Prokopowicz? Prokopowicz. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets his name wrong. So he's my uh, director at work. Okay. And then he obviously um, knows RJ right. through the gym. And then you were saying that they... Greg and RJ play tennis very often together. At what? least once or twice a week. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Greg's, uh, Greg's really embraced, um, you know, working out and changing how he eats. And yeah, he's he looks, looking really good. He looks great. Yeah. Little plug for you there, Greg. <laughs> so if you want to just... So this is high on the bottom. Okay. So we're just going to... Okay. Yep. Uh, wait, which button do I... Oh, the bottom high. one. Okay. Yep. Oh, do I move it around? You can, yeah, or you can just kind of go up and down. Not too high. Oh. Oh. Am I blending it? <laughs> yeah, if you want to just... Uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm scared to get burned. Oh, I'm well then here, let me, uh, oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you, uh, so once we get it all, once we get it all uh, blended up, then we're going to add the uh, Thai curry paste and the coconut milk. And then we'll adjust it for um, sweetness and um, and salt. Okay. So as I said, we uh, if we wanted to make this vegan, yes. we would uh, replace the chicken stock with veg stock, and then um, you would sweeten it with um, maple syrup instead of honey, because of right. course honey isn't uh, vegan because it comes from bees. But, okay, so I thought about honey and it being uh, not vegan, right? Okay. Yep. But there weren't any bees that were hurt from making the honey. You it's, just take them. It's the same thing with milk. Oh, you know, I guess cows, so. cows, right. you know, or goats aren't killed for the 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 making of the milk. Mm -hmm. But it's it's more of an ethical. Oh, I The see. fact that it still comes from an animal. Right. Right. And veganism is about no uh, no animal whatsoever. No animal products, right? Yeah. Yeah, so strict vegans won't eat honey. They won't wear leather, obviously. Okay, so... We're almost there. So if you want to grab the carton of coconut milk... Yes, I can do that. And I think we'll probably just need the one. Just the one? Yeah, we'll stir in the um, the uh, green curry paste. So the seasoning, or how much we put in here is really um, based on taste, because of course this has got some spice to it and some heat. So it just depends on how... Uh, how spicy you want it to be. Medium spicy. Medium spicy? Yes. Okay. How do you like it? I love hot food. Okay. Yeah, I love that endorphin rush from... Uh, okay, then let's go spicy. Let's go spicy? Let's go hot, yes. Okay. If that's what the chef wants, we will have spicy. Well, we'll start We'll start with this amount. So that's okay. about uh, that's about half a cup that uh, that we're adding into there and then we've got some um, pureed ginger so this is uh, this is about a third of a cup of uh, pureed ginger so if you want to you want to pour the coconut milk sure. in here the entire part yeah okay. And we'll just put this back on a, a low temperature. 
to incorporate all of the uh, and as you can see we it, you know if you wanted it a bit thicker you could do a, a cornstarch slurry but um, I don't think it really needs it it looks pretty thick already it is so we can uh, we'll open that up and yes. we'll give it a little bit of a rinse with, uh, water? with some water yeah okay I felt I Oops. felt the cream inside it still so we'll just rinse this with a little bit of water So I'm pretty happy with the uh, the consistency of this. So now we just want to see how it uh, how it tastes for um, for sweetness and for um, salt. And then these are some kefir lime leaves that okay. I like to add in here too, just because it adds a Again, another depth of uh, flavor, even though you've got the, the nice lemongrass and... Oh, there's lemongrass in here? There's lemongrass and the uh, Thai curry paste. Oh, I see, right. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to take my mask off just so that uh, we can see how it, uh, how it tastes and whether we need to add more. I'll taste it too. So I'm happy with the um, I'm happy with the uh, with the heat. Oh wow, and the flavor. that's very good. But I think it needs a little bit of sweetness. So it's very spicy. <laughs> so, no, it's delicious though. <laughs> so we're gonna add in uh, we're gonna add in some honey. So I've got uh, I guess that's probably about a quarter cup. About a quarter, yes. Yep, yeah, of uh, of honey in there. And I'm just going to whisk that in. And how often do you make this soup, Lori? Um, with the garden, carrot, carrots coming out of the garden right now, mm -hmm. um, I'll usually do kind of this batch and then, mm -hmm. I, and then I freeze it down. Because so. you can't even taste the carrots in this. No, it's very uh, it's very subtle, and the, because the carrots were cleaned mm -hmm. and fresh from the garden, I didn't bother peeling them. Okay. okay so I've been look. looking for a good soup recipe, and I think that hits the spot. It's so creamy. It's a good winter soup, I think. Okay. So if you want to, I think I could use just a little bit more honey. More but honey. Okay. So let's say that we're adding half a cup of honey in total, then. Okay. And it needs just a little bit of salt as well. So it's about a teaspoon of salt because you need to have that, that balance. And can you have the soup on its own or do you normally serve it with something? Um, I'll usually have it on its own. I might even add a bit of cooked jasmine rice into it. Okay. Um, and then I garnish it with a little bit of uh, chopped cilantro. Mm. But you could also, I've got lots of Thai basil from the garden over there. So... All right, give that a shot and okay. tell me what you think. Oh, that's really good. The honey really does add a lot of flavor. And you think it's got enough salt? I think it has enough salt. Yeah. So that's basically it. Wow, that was really simple. So that was uh, half an hour from start to finish. So it's carrots, chicken stock, water, yep. green Thai chili paste, coconut, Milk. Uh, coconut milk. Yeah. Some honey. Salt. Some salt and uh, grated ginger. And grated ginger. And uh, the kefir lime leaves. And there you have it. That's really simple. Yeah. I think I can make this at home. I think so. And this is uh, this is great throughout the winter. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and does it freeze well? Freezes very well. Okay, good. Yeah. And again, because it doesn't have any uh, animal dairy in it, because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're making a cream-based soup, Mm-hmm with uh, say um, like 
33% cream. Right. It can kind of separate a little yes, bit. Yes, you can see it curdle almost, right? Yeah, but the coconut milk um, blends nicely. Yep, yeah, freezes uh, freezes really well. Okay. Yeah. And so can you we, add chicken in it too if you wanted? Uh, you probably could. I've never done it. I always just kind of keep it as more of a, like just a, a pureed soup. Yes. But um, yeah, there's no reason that you couldn't add you know, shrimp into it or mm -hmm. chicken or, as I said, the rice just to kind of, you right. know, fortify it a little bit. Right. Or you can add bamboo shoots if you wanted. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you could even thin it down a little bit mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, use it to make some kind of, uh, you know, bowl. Right. So, like, if you've ever gone to Freshy and had the, the green carrot or not the green carrot, the uh, Thai curry bowl. Mm -hmm. So you could have your, you know, your rice and you know your blanched steamed broccoli right. and you know your other vegetables and kind of ladle that over top and you know my parents my mom actually makes um chicken curry with potatoes every sunday and we have oh. that with noodles rice noodles and it's so good and this reminds me of that actually oh, okay so it's very comforting like like home like how mom used to make it so does she do does she make a wet curry then she makes her own curry paste with the um the lemongrass and yeah her curry powders and she's oh she has a motor and pestle and she's always yep. yep and i don't know how how she makes this paste i've yep. always seen her but i've never tried to do it at home i've just done the lazy version and bought it from the store yeah but uh it's it's a lot of work to make the paste oh for sure it but is it's like gold you know you it's so good i would imagine it's absolutely mm -hmm. delicious yeah so let's take a look and see how the uh the brownies are brownies doing. are coming along they're uh just a little bit longer. Yeah. I'll turn it up. The recipe did say 350. Okay. Um, but my oven tends to bake on the hotter side. Oh, okay. So I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to scorch it at all, but you can smell the um, you can smell the coconut and the mm -hmm. cocoa. It's uh, it smells great together. So Lori, tell me about your new position at Cisco. So I am the new um, regional produce specialist and basically it's to help increase our uh, produce sales mm -hmm. and okay. to help uh, build our market share. Okay. So I've had the advantage of going down to the Salinas Valley where we actually bring a lot of our vegetables back. Of course, we try to harvest uh, local when it's available. Right. But being from the, the prairies, um, you know, <laughs> come November, December, it's uh, it's pretty challenging to try and grow ahead of romaine. Yes. So that's when we go down to California four days a week to to bring back. But of course, right now with the fires down in California, yes, it's having a, a serious impact on quality just because yeah. of the heat and the ash. Right. Yeah. I think last year there was a shortage of lettuce. Right. Was it last year or two years ago? But I know in the states you couldn't find lettuce anywhere. Well, the there was lettuce. the there was the um, the recall mm -hmm. with the romaine with okay. uh, with E. coli. I think it was it was salmonella or it was E. coli. I think it was E. coli. Yes. Yeah, and so you know we are one of the maybe the only um, sort of company that you know you you think about you know pickers and in the fields mm -hmm. and uh, we've actually put um, porta potties with hand washing stations mm -hmm. in our fields to sort of s stop these types of things okay. you know but and a lot of people don't think about the fact that you know some some other companies aren't necessarily doing that and that's where you run into you know issues with recalls whether it's green onions or mm -hmm. romaine and right so we have uh, we have very stringent uh, food safety protocols in place when it comes to not just our produce but um, all of our products okay. as well. Yeah. All right. Should we uh, should we plate the soup then? We could. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to help me by chopping up a little bit of uh, cilantro? I would love to help you. <laughs> You can show me how a chef would chop the cilantro <laughs> because how I chop it, I just, there is no way. <laughs> so we'll give this a little bit of a... A little bit of a rinse? A little bit of a rinse. Okay. 
Yeah, cilantro with the fires too is one of those crops that's uh, that's being affected in uh, in California. I actually heard um, on the news that there is a forest or a wildfire in California because someone had a gender reveal party. Yeah, and it actually caused a lot of damages. Yeah, and I believe that uh, I believe that there was uh, I mean there was fires already uh, in effect. Yes. Um, but this kind of created uh, like a secondary a secondary fire. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I believe a firefighter was uh, was uh, was killed. Is uh, this your topping board? It is. Oh my goodness! I thought it was just a little island. I didn't know it was a topping board. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Jerome, do you want to show? So hey, so, you're doing it great. You know what? You're, top it. But you're doing great. I love the fact that you're rolling it. You know, I watch a lot of Rachel Ray, and yeah. I see how she tops things. So, uh, yeah, there. I think that's a good rough job. <laughs> great, uh, great job. Yay! Yay. <laughs> So when you're on mat leave, you do watch a lot of TV. And yes, I watched a lot of Rachel Ray and I, I would watch and see what she cooked. And she cooked a lot of simple foods, really. You and know what? That's, these were very short. That's the uh, that's the best way to go. So we've just got a couple minutes to uh, to wait on the brownies, pull okay. them, uh, pull them out of the oven. And you can ice them mm -hmm. um, or serve them with ice cream. But okay. I kind of am, I'm more of a plain mm -hmm. brownie kind of girl, so okay. I'm good just to try them straight yeah. up. And that's, you know how it, you can tell if it's really good or not, by tasting it plain as it is first, and then putting all the extra stuff if you want it. Yeah. yeah. And then if anybody, you know, wants the recipe, then, you know, we can, uh, we can attach the recipe. Absolutely. Yeah. We might not even need that full two minutes. You know what? I'm pretty happy with, uh, I'm pretty happy with how those look. I like how you always go in the oven and touch it with your fingers because I would never do that. <laughs> I'm very, uh, I don't I'm have very, thick fingertips. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very tactile. So we can just easily slide this, uh, slide this out of the pan. Cut a little piece here. You can see that they're nice and moist. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna try that for me, right? Absolutely. That's my let's, job. <laughs> let's uh, let's get you a fork. Thank you. Maybe I'll have a little nibble too. Yeah. All right. Not too sweet. High in fiber. Mm -hmm. High in protein. I like it. You're right. It's not very sweet, but it still has enough sweetness for you. Yeah. And it's chocolate too. It's really good. Yeah. So again, if you wanted more sweetness, you could mm -hmm. just ice it with a little bit of, um, you know, cream cheese icing or some chocolate frosting, mm -hmm. but yeah. You should try this too, Jerome. <laughs> let's get Jerome a fork. Yeah, let's give him a little taste. <laughs> get in there, Jerome. Get in there. Yep. Gotta have some, uh, gotta have some glory. <laughs> hey, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Lori, for having us in your beautiful home in St. Francis Xavier. It's been a pleasure. It's been uh, it's been my pleasure. I've really enjoyed having you both out here. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.